What is up, Scar and I bringing you part 3 Kanto Pokemon. How well does the original Pokemon fare design wise? Only design wise. I mean, we could talk about the Pokemon in general, but, um, you know, in the first part we covered like about 50 Pokemon, and in the second part, I don't know what happened and why it took longer, but we did like 40 Pokemon. So we got like 60 Pokemon left, and we're also including Alolan and Mega since it's so close for Cancer Pokemon and other variations. So, you know, there's that for, you know, for that reason. Uh, there's a couple baby Pokemon that I didn't cover that isn't an actual Pokemon, just like baby Growlithe and like baby Vulpix and baby Ponyta that I didn't mention. You know, really thinking about it, I don't know if they should be a thing or not. I'm gonna put it in the annotations whether it should be or not. But with that being said, if there's any other Pokemon that I'm missing, you'll see it on screen. Unless those are just the three and that's about it. Anyway, I'm gonna try to go a little bit quicker than I usually do. Um, so let's just go talk about it. The first one is Shelter. Shelter's a... Um... A... I mean... There's not really anything too... I mean, it's exactly what a clown would be. It's just like the face and the tongue. You know, there's not really... Cause like, if you were to make a clown design work, it, it would be technically over-designed. Cause like, you know, if you make it look cool, then... Yeah. So, it's nothing... It's pretty much some... It's not a thing that I'm like ha having high expectations for. I mean, the spikes is a nice choice. But, you know, it's a clam, you know, like the one from Spongebob and stuff. So, the evolution cloister, and by the way, Shelter pretty much looks exactly the same throughout. I mean, that's that's why it's just kind of a simple design, so it's not, you know, anything further would be over-designing. But cloister, on the other hand, for some reason, I find the, like, the head appealing. Like, the, like, it, it almost looks like Gengar in the way, is what I always thought about. And the shell looks nice, you know, they made... It's appropriate from shelter to closer of how the shell looks, you know, and I'm not gonna say the other thing because it is the bivalve Pokemon, so I'm just gonna not mention it, but uh, I like the red and green uh, design of it, but red and blue and yellow kind of has a strange shape to it, which I'm not used to, but of course there's that like that spike right there and all that, but it does give me uh, like a lot of uh, Gengar vibes. Speaking of, the next Pokemon we're going to talk about is Ghastly right here. Simple design, but it, it, I, I feel like it still works, you know, it's, uh, it's meant for Pokemon, you could tell it is, you know, based upon the eyes. Maybe I could see it in like a Mega Man game, because he doesn't, he, he does have like those Mega Man eye shape, and he has vampire teeth. So, um, I think it's a good choice to have like the ball shape, unlike you know, the early designs where it's just literally gas floating, you know, it is ghastly after all. But, um, you know, if we're making a ghost and you want to make like a simple ghost, then this works. Especially with the evolution line, I feel that it does show character. It, I feel like it has a personality to give. So, I'm glad they made the change in yellow and forward, because like, early onward is literally just gas and with the face on it. So you know, they made improvements for something simple. And like I said, it's the face that counts, I feel. <laughs> I, I just imagine like if they had this face on the cloister, then, you know, it, it, it's pretty much the face that shows the expression. Um, but yeah, Hanser on the other hand, uh, I, I like for his creepiness, it has floaty hands and it has like the head uh, with like I don't know how to describe it, it's not really spikes, but it almost looked like Ash Ketchum hair. Which is, I don't know if that's the reasoning why Ash used Haunter just for a little bit and not, like, kept it and not have either Ghastly or Gengar, but just Haunter. So I don't know about that connection. Either way, early generation, let's see. Early generation actually looks creepier than what it is. It could be because of the sprites, uh, pixelation or something and like the hands just make it look all you know it, it almost gives the illusion that it's not only a ghost but it's like almost like a skeleton in a way which works but um either way whether they use this sprite and they enhanced it the way they wanted to or just kept the original de design today because i feel like these are two different personalities one's actually trying to kill you 
and the other one is just a hunter that we know. It almost has like a fleshy feel to it. I think you guys know what I mean when I say that, because I, I, I get like two different feelings when I see these two side by side, you know? Gengar, on the other hand, I've grown to love a whole bunch. I always did like this Pokemon, but never got the opportunity to use it. Um, Gengar is very appealing to look at as well, like design-wise. I don't know what is based off. Like, besides the ghost, it, it, I, I said it in my uh, Leaf Green Nuzlocke, I'm all like, I get the vibe that he's like some kind of kitty gorilla or something. I don't know. I'm gonna look at the origins, but it does say it's a shadow Pokemon. And I definitely do get like a, I, I get like a gorilla vibe in the early sprites when I do look at this. And it's interesting too, because in the real life, uh, or I, I, I shouldn't say real life, but like in Pokken, it has like a strange effect on his body for, you know, something that I'm not used to, but yeah, red and green actually looks much more different than I imagine it to be. It ha his body goes upward and it definitely does look like a gorilla to me. I don't know, maybe it's just me that thinks so, because every time I ask them, I'm like, do you see a cat gorilla? They're like, no. Uh, I mean, it has a tail, so gorillas don't really have tails, but it's supposed to basically just be a shadow monster. Maybe it's uh, supposed to be something like Sully, or maybe, I don't know. But the red and blue sprite, which um, has more of a gorilla cat feel that I'm talking about, you know, kind of, I don't know, man. It's just, maybe it's just me. They fix the yellow and onward, though. Um, but going back to the, actually, let me look at the name origins. There's, there's a few things I always talk about with, when it comes to Gengar. Um, so, the trivia, and maybe I shouldn't look at the trivia. Oh, but that's, I do see something right here, hang on. It seems to be simply based on a general cartoonish ghost cats, or the Chezzers. Chezzer? Chezzer. Chezzer cat, and possibly and a distorted shadow of a human being like shadow people. There is something pertaining to shadow people that I don't really know about, that there's like a controversial story behind it, so maybe I'll go back to it, because I don't think this is the only Pokemon that covers shadow people. Um, there's just a lot of Pokemon to cover to just dive what shadow people mean. I'll go back to this, I promise, in like a future video, maybe when I cover a different generation that talks about this because this isn't going to be the last time uh, so we'll be looking into this name origin though Gengar and Gengar are possibly shortening Doppel Ugh. possibly shortening Doppelganger a double of a person which is fitting for a Pokemon with the habit of pretending to be person shadow the kanji's Maboroshi can also be read as Gen or Gen it it is used in words meaning phantom or illusion. There is also striking pronunciation similar to the Danish word Gengengar, a term of ghosts found in Scandinavia folklore. So it is a bit interesting. There's a whole bunch of trivia right here. Gengar is a uh, favorite Pokemon of Ken Sug Sugumuri, which is cool because he's in the opening title with uh, Nidorino and stuff. In Red and Blue Beta, Gengar was originally known as Phantom. Gengar, along with Nidorino, with whom it battles in the beginning of Pokemon Red, Blue, Green, Fire, Red, Leaf, Green, originals of the Capsule Monster manga, the precursor of the Pokemon franchise. Okay. Gengar and Nidorino are the, also the very first Pokemon to appear in the anime, which is true. In Pokemon X or Y, Gengar is the only Pokemon with the ability to levitate that is not eligible for Sky Battles. Alright. No other Pokemon has the same type combination as Gengar's is, and it's a l evolutionary... Bleh, it's evolutionary... Bleh, I can't say that word. It's lying pretty much, god dang it. Due to his unique type combination, Gengar's evolutionary... Le 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 I, it's the same damn word I can't say all at once. The evolutionary line are the only poison type Pokemon that are also weak against dark types. Gengar could seen as a counterpart to Alakazam. They are both at the last stage of three-part evolutionary line. Require trading in each of their final stage evolution are capable of mega evolutions. They are the same height. What? That's the same height. Gengar's shorter though. What the heck? And both of them get shorter upon mega evolution. They 
share base friendships of 70 and sense the puzzles of the Pokemon. The Pokemon and Elgazan are put against each other. And being escorted. I'm sorry that you just hear me badly reading. There's just a whole bunch of stuff, and I do notice that that Gengar and Alakazam always butt heads. That's something I did forget to point out though, is the counterparts when uh, Gengar and Alakazam, and not only that, Jigglypuff become giant and they have like these markings and stuff fighting against each other. Um, there's also, and I was saying about the Pokken graphic of what it looks like, there's a lot of things talking about this simple Pokemon alone, but yeah, I'm looking at it right now, and like, there's like a, a weird texture. I get like a like a Ghostbusters vibe on it. I always do like this though. I could swear I had like a rainbow tongue of some kind. There's also um, Mega Gengar, um, which is a very interesting. It definitely it definitely dives into the ghostly shadow part of his you know of his side um i really do like both of these designs gengar and mega gengar because mega gengar he has like a different color texture to him that fades into it and it's appealing as well um i kind of like gengar the most though um design wise of course um but yeah um i i, I was kind of skimming through the trivia and i stopped because i, I kept like making mistakes but i don't know if there's anything else that i should talk about when it comes to this um mega gengar has the highest base special attack out of all ghosts and poison type pokemon it is also the highest base speed stat of all ghost pokemon when viewing mega gengar's pokedex entry the camera view can only be moved sideways in the core series games mega gengar has small feet that can't that can be seen by recalling it and sending it out. In Pokémon Tournament, however, Mega, Mega Gengar does not have feet, instead of Portal appears beneath it. So apparently Mega Gengar has feet. This is the first I heard of it. I mean, I guess it makes sense, but I always just assume that it just doesn't have feet anymore. You know, because it goes in the shadows and stuff. It's a bit weird thinking about it now. Gengar really is one of the... the cornerstones of Pokemon for sure it doesn't really get much love as much as it should I mean it is love but not not all that much now there's Onyx as the next Pokemon it's a rock snake um, I feel like a rock snake like if you were to tell me to make one I guess I guess that's fair but like the head area doesn't look like something that would be a snake you know um, uh, there is probably be something that's more looking like a snake I guess like the eyes and maybe put fangs on it or or maybe it doesn't look all that reptilian I'm not sure what it looks like because if you put onyx head and put it in like a different body like I don't know like Rhyhorn, but make his body a bit shorter so it's not out of proportion since Rhyhorn's head's so big, so it's all in proportion. You, you, you know, you kind of know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it is, it's not obvious that it's a snake if you just look at it just on the head and that's about it. But I guess that's not the point considering what the evolution is. Um, but putting rock by rock, yeah, I, it, it sounds about right. Uh, but yeah, when I think of Rock Snake, if I wasn't just thinking, oh, just put a rock at every end or whatever, I would just make, you know, a regular snake, I guess. I, I keep thinking that Kirby Boss, that's a snake, just, just completely turn his body to stone, pretty much, and he would be, like, slithering around and you could hear rock sounds as he's grinding on whatever, the you know, of... Whatever is pretty much on, pretty much, it'll be slithering somewhere. You can hear rock dragging. So, there's that. Um, red and green has an interesting sprite. I don't really... Like, I could swear his head's a bit different, but... Oh, oh well, you know. It, it's kind of interesting that they never even thought of, of a beta design of, like, a smaller rock snake. But I guess to be fair, it would look a little bit too pathetic, you know, thinking about like a really, really small version of Onyx. So I, I don't think it would work. So Onyx, 
It's not all that much of a design. Anyway, we got ourselves Drowsy. To me, Drowsy looks disgusting. I'm just gonna be honest. Um, there's a constant thing where, like, <laughs> one of the one of my favorite YouTubers I like to watch is King Nappy, and he always says that it's like chocolate, like his pants area, and like that he would lick it off and stuff like that, starting with the toes, and that's why he has yellow feet. That's just gross, man. I'm sorry. It really is. If you don't, if you look at Drowsy and and you don't think he's a bit gross at all, cause the, this is what I think of. I think that he has like like an elephant's body and if you know what an elephant body has you wouldn't be licking that thing at all because if you zoom in on, on an elephant he has hair everywhere it's just it's just bits and pieces of hair and like the skin's rough and like my tongue is going nowhere near that like that's kind of gross and I don't know man he has a trunk and you know, I think it, this is the actual artwork though, I don't know, or a tapir, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, it's based off a Malaysian tapir, and uh, yeah, let's just move on. It, you know, it's, it's just, I think it's always just meant to be a creepy Pokemon, so I guess they hit the mark, but... I can't help but think that it just looks creepy. I mean, look, even the sprite that's on the screen right now, it's like squinty as eyes. You can't trust this man. Like, you just can't. Hypno, on the other hand, I'm not sure if this is still supposed to be a tapir. Um, there's some sprites in the core games where it does look appealing because of, like, the skin. I guess, the like, the skin tone, I guess, because it makes it look shiny. And it, 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 you know, just like how Alakazam is. I think like they really benefit from like the sprite work uh, of how it looks so um, you'll, I'll definitely show that on screen to show what exactly I mean but Hypno as a design I mean I guess if they I, I, I now that I think about it like they should just have like an evolution of, of him being you know an illusion master or something, some type of magician, because like he has the, you know, the little dreidel thing. I'm not sure what the heck it's called, the little ball on a string thing. He should have like, I get like a Phantom of the Opera vibe. Um, obviously, Hypno's meant to be a creepy Pokemon based upon his Pokedex entry, uh, leading kids away from their homes and stuff like that, which is really, really creepy. Uh, red and green has a very questionable sprite. Very, very questionable sprite. Um, I guess the sprite that I'm thinking of is like second gen sprite. Yeah, I guess it's the. Yeah, because it has a very shiny head. Other than that, they just go back to the regular yellow um, tone of body and all that stuff. Creepy Pokemon, I think they. I, I don't. I feel like what it could be, it could be better if they just do the Illusion Master evolution to really benefit it. Cause as of right now, it's kind of stale in a way. They just made slap something. They they it's pretty much a concept idea. It's not really meant to be an overly design or, or appealing Pokemon to look at. Even though I said that the sprite looks appealing. Like I said, it's just as you know, it's just like a sprite work is you know that's about it anyway let's just move on we got ourselves crabby uh, <laughs> I like it on the last part I'm, I'm all like well basically an animal crabby is definitely just basically a crab um, but at least that has some something like, like you know with colors I guess but nothing too uh, special. This is pretty much a simple crab. You know, it, they don't need to overcomplicate it either. There's so, just some things that you don't need to overcomplicate, and like having a clam Pokemon and a crab Pokemon, you don't need to overcomplicate it. It's fine. It, it's kind of uh, interesting too because since they made, um, you know, Clauncher and stuff like that, um, they did a good job with colors and all that stuff. But I think Crabby's a bit too simple. 
because it looks pretty much the same with that all with all the sprites that it has. You know, there's different positions and angles that it's in though. That's about it. Cause like the yellow version sprite, it's just in a weird. Um, I'm gonna say 65 degree angle. I don't know. Kingler, on the other hand, interesting. Uh, I mean, it, I think the crown is the one thing that makes it stand out just a little bit. Crabs, for some reason, always have like a bigger claw than the other one. I never actually looked into it. Why is that a thing? But it seems to always be a thing when it comes to crabs. So I, I even think of Banjo Kazooie when I look at that, because like you know, there's crabs that have bigger eyes than the other one, or you know, like I said, the claw, the claw. But you know, pretty much it. Um, all the sprites look pretty much the same too. So. You could tell this was just like, alright, we're just gonna draw a crab and draw a bigger crab and make it look a bit different to, to you know, really present the audience like, okay, well here's his evolution. Alright, you know, it's it's pretty, um, pretty understandable but also basic, it, you know, no high expectations here when it comes to crabs. Voltorb, um... See, the thing about Voltorb is, it's, a, it's another uh, simple Pokemon that people would say is all like, well, you know, it's just a Pokeball with the face. At least this Pokeball with the face has a, you know, a bit personality to it. I just wish that the anim anime really pushed it more, because all it does in the anime, every time you see it, ever, it just blows up or charges, like, it, you know, some electricity that goes around, or just blow up. It's one or the other. It's never showing some type of personality unless it's being juggled. I mean, I don't think that even counts. But I feel like Voltorb could uh, have some personality. If Ash had this as a Pokemon, people would love it more. But it's just not. You know, you would think that the uh, Pokemon, oh, this Pokemon is just a Pokeball, would be in the mascot, or not the mascot, the main character's team or somewhere near it. But it's just not. You know, you can make a story around this thing, you know. Uh, this my Pokeball's Pokemon. You know, that kind of writes itself if you think about it. So, I feel like it has personality. I think it's just the eyebrows, though, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Um, there's a lot of art about Voltorb that, you know, makes it look cool. I think, just like Ghastly, it just shows... Yeah, it's just the personality thing that I really like about it. But yeah, if you want me to be fair, it is simple, you know. It, it was pretty much the same throughout the whole generations of what the sprite looks like. Of, you know, what Voltorb is today. And, uh, there's the theory that, uh, Voltorb has been possessed by a Haunter. If a Haunter went into a Pokeball, it turns into Voltorb. Don't know if that's true or not. Um, because Haunter and Voltorb, as when you look at it, it's two di different personalities. So who knows? Haunter looks more like a goofy, uh, like personality-wise as a goofy Pokemon. Voltorb looks very serious and looks like it can mess things up. But when it comes to Electrode, Electrode, there's a couple sprites that's different about it. It's either like super goofy or it's like, hey, check me out, or whatever. There's way, there's a lot of one. I don't know. Like, there's one that has, like, is uh, looking surprised and, like, cutesy in a way. I don't know how to describe it better than that. Because uh, it has those beady eyes. So I feel like, if anything, Volta is better than this when it comes to design. Like, I see this picture, and there's two of them laughing. They look like emojis. <laughs> This is what I see, and then I see this picture where it looks super intense, and yeah. But this is like a hacha shot, that's what I'm talking about. It's like, oh, check me out, I'm gonna blow up. That's another thing. I feel like Electro got it worse when it comes to the anime, because literally all it does is blow up. Voltorbs at least does some electrical charges. Every single time Electro shows up, it's just boom. Even in games, like Super Smash Bros. has this and assist trophy, so like, you know what? Why don't you explode? That's just what it does. 
You see it in the core games, it's just there to blow up. That's all it does. Uh, I use them in my team, and I even when I did use them in my team, I'm all like, people think this this is weird. I feel like Voltorb still has more story to present itself with, because like I said, like I said, a Pokemon, my Pokeballs a Pokemon kind of writes itself. You know, if I were to write it as an anime, and since there's so many Pokemon that just doesn't evolve, you know, with Ash. I would keep Voltorb as a Voltorb, just simple as that, because Electrode um, is kind of dull, you know, because it's upside down Pokeball, it's all like, I don't know, and it's sad to say that Voltorb looks better than this thing, but it does. Um, but every sprite so far that I look at it kind of has like that snarky look. I don't really see what he's being snarky about, all he does is blow up, so nothing too special. Voltorb is better. It, it, see, it's interesting just hearing my opinions out loud because, you know, I always, like, we'll, we'll get over it at the end. Just hopefully I got enough time for everything. Execute! My god, there's so much to talk about what's wrong with this damn Pokemon. This is probably one of my least favorite designs. I forget what I said in the couple parts of, like, bad designs. Maybe Alolan uh, Persian is a bad design. And eradicate for sure, but execute their eggs, and it, they already explain that these eggs aren't even eggs, even though it's in the name. It's execute. It's 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 in the name. I mean, ugh, it's so dumb. Cause you would think that execute will evolve into something I don't know, like a like a some type of bird, like Torchic, and then it'll evolve into Combuskin, and then Blaziken or whatever. And uh, but that's more confusing because it has this whole line, you know. But you would think that these are regular eggs, but they're not. Uh, it's supposed to be seeds that just so happens to sprout and turn into a pineapple tree. It's just everything that's coming out of my mouth sounds random. I don't think they took this Pokemon serious whatsoever, but it doesn't excuse the fact that it's still like a bad design regardless. What could you do anyway? Like, I don't... This, this was before breeding, so I guess? But they could have at least have like just one egg. I don't even know. There's already Togepi anyway, but that was later design, I'm sure. I don't think they should even make this Pokemon. Like, this just... You could see the yoke for God's sakes. It's back there. Like, the that one executes dead and they're just hanging around. And yes, I know, I already said Dodrio has like multiple personalities and you could clearly see that all these executes... There's a loud bird outside. They know. They just know. I know that all these executes show different sides of personality, but... It's not represented well, I feel. Like, if you saw the anime, you know, they kind of share the same expressions in a way. And, and I don't even think it's even the same different personalities, to be honest, because there's one that's just sad back there, and the rest looks the same anyway, honestly, except for that dead one in the corner. It's confusing. It's confusing. I don't know. So uh, I'm gonna look at the origins to see if there's anything else that I miss when it comes to Execute. And uh, the Evolution has an Alolan form, but Execute doesn't. So I don't know why they just went like, you know what? It's the same as it's the same as it is. I don't know why. And I don't know why red and blue like there's all these eggs and there's just a giant egg in the middle. That's pretty stupid. But at least in second gen, like, they use the, the color to their advantage and the sprite looks kind of appealing, you know? But they can't trick me either way. Like, that's still a bad design, in my opinion. Probably one of the worst. And I don't even mind Execute. They don't really matter to me, though, honestly. Uh, Execute may be based on both plant seeds and a clutch of eggs. Which they are not, of course. If it's possibly a visual pun on the eggplant, so it may also have been inspired by the egg yolk tomato or the bird's nest fungi. It may also draw inspiration from coconuts considering Executor resembles to a palm tree and the fact that Execute is hunted by crab brawler, which I didn't even know, what the heck, that's... Why? 
I don't even know what crabs like. Do, don't they just eat meat or something? Which may be based on coconut crab. Alright. Is that a thing? I don't even know. Okay, well that's weird. It's so stupid because even in the name origins it says, although it's more likely to derive from egg. It's so dumb. I would understand if it is eggplant though, but it's, it's, you know, an eggplant's purple, so, you know, let's just move on. So we got ourselves Executor. Uh, random Pokemon is random, at least when you're playing in the games. Uh, over time, you get used to the sprite, and then you just suddenly like it. It's very weird, because it doesn't look that bad once you just get over the fact of how random it is. It's really, really dumb. And it, it, it's funny too because uh, later we're going to talk about pincer and it kind of has the pincer body already. Like if you just cut the top half out and put pincer's top half, you wouldn't know the difference. But it's a fat pineapple tree that was evolved from eggs and it has multiple faces. And again, with the multiple personality thing, there's a difference between these multiple personalities with Dodrio than Execute and Executor. Like, that's, I feel like that's two different categories. Execute, expressions wise, isn't, it, it, it's, it just meshes together, and when it doesn't mesh together, it's just not represented right. And Executor is almost exactly the same way. Like, the faces, don't have different personalities even though they try to deem it that way but it's not represented right either like it's really weird I think early generations the same like they don't they didn't really do much with this one. Oh no it was much worse oh god look at oh 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 it looks like Frankenstein just like decided to garden one day and just slap plants together Oh, you're disgusting. Oh, God. Oh, well, at least they made it a bit better, but that's... Oh, that's an abomination. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. <laughs> I'm scrolling down like, oh, it's pretty much gonna look the same, right? No. Jesus. I'm glad they changed it. They could have made it better, though. At least when, like, whenever anybody uses a an executor, it, it kind of, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you've grown to love it in a way. Like, you just kind of just don't think about it. Your, your mind just turns off, and then you just accept it, and you're like, oh, well, he looks appealing, I guess. You know, he's a good grass type. So, there's that. Hopefully someone knows what I mean, because it is weird. It's a phenomenon. Anyway, Alolan executor, they just stretched his neck out like he has a weird hip problem um you know i'm pretty sure every time he looks in the mirror he feels fat you know he, they, people tend to do that but they don't realize that they have skinny features to benefit from but it is out of proportion still interesting that it's a dragon type i you know if if i really it, i feel like that's a stretch you know also his neck's a stretch Looking at the face, you kind of understand why it's a dragon, but like, that's that's why it's a stretch. It's like you have to you have to reason with yourself to to settle that it's a dragon. You know, with the tail, it's it's kind of cool that like they made it work, but it doesn't excuse the fact that it is weird. You know, there's not really much else to talk about. It's just it makes sense. They they it's a tree for God's sakes and. And it makes a whole lot more sense in Executor. Uh, it, you know, the Alolan form is the true original form. That's what the Alolan people say. And they might be right. It would make a lot more sense than just a regular fat tree. So, there's that. So, we're gonna go talk about Cubone right quick. Cubone's actually a pretty good design. Like, it, a lot of people would say it's like a Charmander variant. Um, at least that's what the theory is, and the skulls like Kangaskhan, we'll get over Kangaskhan in a second, but it's still interesting nonetheless. Um, the evolution has a Alolan form, and I feel like Cubone should have had one as well, because it doesn't make much sense, and the thing is, there's multiple Cubones, so it's not like, it, it, it's kind of confusing knowing the origins, but still have other Cubones have that same origin, it's a bit weird. 
but at least the skull's kind of like uh, unique looking and you know almost like a Charmander body style and this could probably be used in other animes as well that's why uh, it, it does so well in the in the anime well there's uh, being a young Cubone that like cries over his origins and all this other stuff he, he's he does really well with any anime you put him in like he could work this is a good character design if you just break it down enough I like the red and green sprite the most I feel like they should have just kept this one this one looks more appealing the skull, it looks uh, more of shape. It is. It would be interesting to find out what his true identity is, if uh, if anything. Well, a lot of people say this is actually a baby, baby Kangaskhan. That's why they say that. Um, they should have Baby Kangaskhan as a whole separate Pokemon, but who knows? Maybe it is this. So there's that. So here's a Marowak. I find Marowak appealing too, but uh, his height kind of uh, kind of restricts it from being a better design. I feel like if it needs an e it, it needs an evolution because of his height. I don't know. I it, it's just weird. It's just weird. I feel like he should be bigger. I mean, he is a dinosaur, right, or some type of reptile. I feel like he should be so much, so much bigger. Um, and it's weird that when it does a, like Cubone, it's wearing the skull of his mother, right? So how come when it evolves, it still has it? Like I feel like Cubone should just be his own Pokemon, because, like I said, they share origins. So it's a bit more confusing when Marowak, like he's still wearing the the, the mom's skull, and then it becomes something else and becomes a part of him. I guess that's. That's deep, actually. Jesus, I didn't even think about that. Um, but uh, I always remember this, and I mentioned this again with the leaf green nuzlocke that I had. That the back sprite looks like a horse for some reason. I don't know why. It just does, because you can see the teeth there. It looks like it's grinning, and it's just a bit weird. And uh, early sprites was different anyway. Like the skull was a bit more rounder, and his body was a bit more rounder too. And I feel like he should be taller. That's like the only problem I have with Marowak. Or at least have an evolution that's taller. Or And then it kind of like... It kind of... You know, justifies Marowak if it did have an evolution. The Alolan form is pretty incredible. I actually like this thing a lot. And it's good that this happens. But like I said, they should have Cubone as an Alolan form. Even though it wouldn't make story uh, storyline sense when it comes to the origins, like I keep mentioning, but Marowak Alolan looks pretty damn cool. Like the color color works fine, being like uh, black, gray, and white, and you know all these kind of. I, I want I want to say different gray shadings. I'm not really sure if that's the right word, but the blue flames really makes it stand out. You know. Uh, it's cool that it's a fire ghost type. Finally, it isn't. Oh, it's ground fire. Okay, it's fire ghost, which is cool, and it makes it, either way it makes storyline sense regardless. Cause you know, uh, there's that Marowak in Pokemon Tower that it's a ghost and it's still haunting the place until like you know you battle with them and it's at peace. Um, but you know. I could, I want to, I kind of want to see a Cubone Fire Ghost, you know. It'd be cool. It makes, it makes perfect sense. And it's such a great Pokemon. But yeah, you evolve it by the night at level 28, I guess. Alright, so here's another Pokemon. Uh, I feel like Hitmonlee is a huge fan favorite on people. Uh, just the way it looks. It does look cool. Uh, one of my closest friends like using Hitmonlee uh, over Hitmonchan. Um, you know, I can understand why. Uh, design-wise, it is... It, I feel like it is better. It kind of looks like a chicken nugget, and I think it's probably the eyes that stands out. But it's still cool. The manga really represents Hitmonlee so much better than in the games. Because in the manga, uh, just in case you don't know this, his legs and arms stretch out. And when I mean stretch out, I mean they stretch out far. Like he's pretty much Mr. Fantastic 
and they're restricting in the other animes like that or when I said the other animes I mean the anime because there's manga and then there's anime they don't stretch that much he just kicks a lot so you know and says his name uh, he almost has like a villainous feel to him but it's not all that much because I it's just from that one anime episode so um, it definitely shows a personality that he does have dark tendencies regardless but it's such a badass feel to it and uh, I feel like him on Lake could do so much and I wish that he does you know actually show that he could stretch his arms and legs out it would it would uh, it would bring out so much more uh, character to himself if he did that showing that he's a strategic fighter not just only kicking because he has punching moves as well don't forget about that he would do a lot better if he was actually part of an evil organization you know he'd be a threat um, but I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I should say that would help him Ali but I don't know Early designs, let me see, it's uh, pretty much the same throughout the whole thing, so there's not much to talk about there. So let's go talk about his counterpart. Oh, and Himali, they say it's based on uh, Bruce Lee. So Himali's a combination of hit, means monster, and Lee, uh, reference to Bruce Lee. The name is also related to Him on Chan and Him on Top, over which are parallel evolutions to his generation too. So, Sawa Mular is derived from Tadashi Samalur, his famous kickboxer. Um, but the origins, based on his Japanese name kicking attributes, Himali represented Japanese kickboxer Tadashi Sawamura. Himali may be a personification of martial arts that focus on kicking, such as kickboxing, savage, Muay Thai, Taekwondo. I'm not saying that right, I know this. Nitsu's lack of head, Himali designs bear resemblance to a mythical headless man such as Zing Tiang and the Hindu demon Kabunda. None of that I'm presenting right, pr pronouncing right, that's ironic, I'm not pronouncing pronouncing right. Hitmonchan, let's just go talk about him. Um, my only gripe is that the, he has like a skirt, that's kind of what always gets, because think about it, if you're a little boy and you're playing these games and you're very anti-girl let's just put it that way you don't like anything girly that's why you're a boy you do boy things or whatever I mean not to bring it down but this was very much me when I was a kid uh, I didn't really like girly things so that's the thought that always entered my mind when I saw Hitmonchan so like it has a dress but it doesn't I always pick Hitmonchan over Hitmon Lee because I just like boxes more and I like the good side more. That's just how it was. Um, I always did think that the dark side was cool, but I always just stick to my roots and just pick the good side. But overall, design-wise, Himali is better. They could make Himanchan more appealing. I mean, he has his uh, own appealing effect, but I don't know. I don't think he needs the white uh, clothes, pretty much. I feel like if they changed it, I mean, I can understand why they did it, because picturing him with just regular shorts is just weird at this point, because we're so used to seeing him dressed this way. But at least he's still he's still pretty cool, you know? It's, you know, it's, uh, I know I'm bashing it for having a skirt, but it'd be so much better, I don't know. You could design it a little bit more, but then hopefully it won't suffer from being over-designed. But regardless, it would be interesting if it had an Alolan form. I, I, for some reason, when I say that, I just picture ice. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, let's see, early design. I feel like it's a bit different. It kind of is. His face is a bit different and his gloves are a lot bigger, it looks like. If they had this Hitmonchan today, I would not like it at all design-wise. Like, Hitmon Lee would mount over this thing. Um, but yeah. A lot of people say that this is based off Jackie Chan um, over his piston punch, but I don't think that's technically true. It says it here, it says it's a reference to Jackie Chan, but Jackie Chan is not only known for punching though, is the thing. He's not known for punches in general, he's known for fighting in general. It's kind of a difference. 
because you don't go like, oh, the uh, Mike Tyson is known for kicking. Be like, no, he's known for punching. He's a boxer. Uh, kind of a bad example, but whatever. Based on his Japanese name and boxer boxer aspects, Emily may be represented by the boxer Herud Ibuhara, the color Himanchan's dove in the normal and shiny co colorations might be a reference to the red corner and the blue corner in boxing. In gold, hard gold, and generation 5 and X, Pokedex entry mentions that needs a short break after fighting for 3 minutes, which is a reference to the variation of the rounds in boxing. Himanchan's a combination of hit means monster and chan, a reference to Jackie Chan. The name is also related to Tyrogues, other evolutions, Himan leaves him on top. Ibu Waller is derived from the Japanese world champion boxer Hiroki Ibuhara. Alright, because I remember reading something that like Jackie Chan's known for his piston punch. I just feel like Jackie Chan's known for fighting uniquely in a karate style. I, you know, I'm being general, I don't mean karate karate, but. Uh, and he's also known for his stunts in movies. That's just what I know Jackie Chan for. Bruce Lee, I understand the kick thing. That's what he's known for, and he's also known. Believe it or not, uh, he's famous for also the one-inch punch as well. That's just one of his moves that he's known for, so it's interesting. So we got Lickitung. Weird Pokemon, not really much to talk about it. it I mean, it, it kind of looks like a weird gecko in a way. And I, I, uh, I understand the benefit of having a tail because his tongue is so long that his tail kind of shrink shrivels up because that's like where the tongue comes from which is interesting because there's all these other fire type pokemon that they have like their fire pouches so that's where the fire comes from like they have some explanations on some pokemon and this one kind of spells it out for itself his tail shrinks his tongue gets longer that's just how it does it if it wants to reach something he sees like a pineapple on a tree or whatever or some type of fruit he can reach it and then his tail kind of shortens it down, which makes sense. Um, it doesn't change the fact that it's a weird uh, concept and design, but I guess it works, you know. I can't really see it in a, any other different color uh, besides pink. I don't know, maybe a baby blue, but I'm just saying that just for appealing sakes. I guess they could just change like the color, the colors to make it pop more, but pink is fine, I guess. Lickitung is kind of a forgettable Pokemon anyway. It looks more Yoshi-ish in red and green. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it has a lot more beady eyes and his head is shaped differently. But yellow, they changed it to what we know today. And then so on and afterwards. Okay, moving on. We got Coffee! Uh, Coughing, he's a goofball Pokemon. I kind of like his, like, personality when it shows. It has similar face to Ghastly, but when you look at Ghastly and you look at Coughing, you could tell that they kind of, you know, they're, they don't have the same kind of feel to it, you know. But yeah, I like the symbol on the chest and, like, the coloration being a simple purple works for it. I, I do like Coughing, honestly. He's definitely usable in the anime, like when I saw him, like, it makes sense, you know? It, it just clicks, it, it clicks right. It was upside down before, like the symbol was up and his face was down. Interesting choice. And, uh, yeah, there's not really much else to talk about when it comes to him. Red and green, there's something off about him, I don't know what. There's also his evolution, wheezing. You know, if you show it to a new person, they would think this is weird. I can understand why. But if you break it down, you could understand that Weezing's actually not bad at all. I, you know, once you get so used to him, you actually can't help but like it. It's that weird executor effect, but it's understandable more when it comes to Weezing. I feel like Weezing is actually good appealing design in a weird way. Uh, and it works. It makes sense too because it's a poison type and maybe there's some defects when it came to his evolution from coughing to wheezing. It makes perfect sense, you know, from his eyes to his mouth uh, to his symbol, it, it looks perfectly fine, but it wouldn't be acceptable as an evolution if it was just one ball by itself. I think it needed to have like a second defective smaller self on him. Uh, to not be a simple design and, and not 
like, you know, it would be uninspired just to have one ball of wheezing and, you know, a bigger ball from coughing even though they're two different personalities. It still works, is what I'm trying to say. Maybe that's what Muck needs, if, you know, so people won't say it's just a bigger grinder. If Muck had, like, some defect with him, so he would have, like, two other, I don't know, two other Grimer Mucks on him or something, I don't know. Uh, I felt like Muck just works, but Weezing, it's it's kind of a, I, I almost dare say it's almost brilliant. Honestly, if you think about it, <laughs> well, maybe not brilliant, maybe, maybe I'm going too easy on him. I feel like it's just a smart choice uh, adding another one to it. It could freak people out for people that doesn't see this, which I understand, but at least it works, and at least it shows something. Trust me, when that person sees this first time, and then he plays it, and he, he uses a wheezing for his team, he'll be so used to it, he can't help but love it. It's just how it's gonna be. There's gonna be plenty of Pokemon that's gonna be just like this, so... Uh, here's an original one. I actually like Rhyhorn a lot. It's such a great design, in my opinion. Like, it, it doesn't just look like a Rhino. I mean, you could tell it's a Rhino, but when you look at a Rhino and you look at this, this looks a lot more mecha. Like, even though it's obviously rock, it has a great feel to it where Rhyhorn actually is such a great design. He might even be better than Rhydon. I think he is better than Rhydon. I feel like it's a great design. It's like a steel plated Rhino, but it's obviously not. Um, even if you were to say he's like rock guarded or something, it's still great. It, it's still super cool Pokemon. Um, not much else. I mean, Red and, uh, the early designs were a bit different. Like his head was a lot more gigantic, but it still had that feel to it. Where if you put Rhino and then this thing next to each other, they still would be two separate things. But it's still pretty cool. The first Pokemon ever! We got ourselves Rhydon. Rhydon, just like Nidoking and Nidoqueen and like a couple other Pokemon, like Agron, has an appeal factor that I really like. So I understand why this is the first Pokemon. It has a drill on his head, and yeah, pretty much, there's nothing that really suffers from it. I just feel like Rhyhorn is a lot better designed than this one. You know, it's it's a great a great Pokemon too. It just suffers from like weakness, like common ones, you know, water and grass and all that. I think I, I don't know. I like the red and green design. You know, it, it's kind of a, it's definitely comic base type of design. And then red and blue, they kind of were experimenting it. And then yellow is the right horn, or not the right horn, the right on that we know today. So it's interesting. I find it interesting. I'm already running out of time. I don't even know if I should just finish the rest because I got like 40 Pokemon left. Um, so we got ourselves Chansey. Uh, Chansey, a bit too simple. It's just an egg with another egg uh, with hair. There's not really much else to talk about because at least Jigglypuff shows some personality to it. You know, yeah, Chansey obviously shows personality, but not that much. I feel like it's very one-dimensional. I feel like she just, especially in the anime, it kind of proves my point in the anime, if anything. All it does is just be overly nice. That's it. That It's very one-dimensional, in my opinion. Early designs, it, it's a lot worse. His hair is shorter, it looks more of an egg shape than it already is, so there's that. Not really a fan of Chansey, although it is a very rare Pokemon that's annoying to catch. Yeah, that's, that's it, it's super one-dimensional. We can move on. Tangela, uh, I can understand why people would think it's an inspired design, but it, at least it has some type of mystery to it. I still feel like they should have a baby evolution with this. Or baby Pokemon, I should say. You know, there's Tangolf. I love this thing. Um, could have definitely explained it more with Tangela. Yeah, I can understand, but uh, 
I would say this is an actual real exception from like what I said, you know, c from part one. Because I know I said like, oh well, other characters and other animes, you can't really excuse that. Oh, there's that first designs, but Tingle, I can understand why. Like, if I were to make a game and I wanted to put an enemy, like first enemy that you see in the game, you know, like Goombas and all that stuff. I feel like Tingler would be one of those things. I feel like he would be a first enemy thing that you see. Even though you see him like probably halfway in the game or whatever. At least it shows some type of personality. It's uh, original Japanese names like Medusa or something like that. I feel like it's a lot worse than Red and Green and Red and Blue. Like it, it's, it's vines are out of control and it's pretty much just like a fuzzball if it wasn't made out of vines. They fixed it yellow and onward to the Tingalo that we know today that looks like a ball of vines doesn't really show all that much personality because it's really just eyes that are uh, also one dimensional I guess it kinda looks curious but not all that much it's not very expressive for obvious reasons but like I like the shoes that's something I do like so if there's anything I, I guess this would be an exception I feel like this is first enemy territory you know, just like Mega Man or something. So we got Kangaskhan. I think the color choice is a poor choice. A bit too basic, but I guess because it's a normal type. Because um, it does look similar to Needle King and Needle Queen and Rhydon and Agron and all that, being like the dinosaur stereotype that I so like, you know. But Kangaskhan's kind of the bottom of the barrel kind. It's one that I don't really like that much and I, I do think it's because of the color design and and I guess the concept too because it's supposed to be like a dinosaur kangaroo thing with the pouch and the baby inside so I, it's a bit weird as well if you just if you just think about it I don't know what they could do to fix this maybe if they make it like red and black or something like the black parts would be on those uh, little brick things that's coming out of his shoulders and his legs and stuff. So I don't know. I feel like that would work if he didn't have the baby too. But uh, they're saying that the baby will become a Cubone and that the theory would be like that the skull is what Cubone's wearing and all that stuff and a baby Kangaskhan grows up and learns his own and that's why it's sad all the time and all that. It's the lonely Pokemon. But I don't know if it's true or not, but I feel like Baby Kangaskhan should have been his own Pokemon. If we're uh, critiquing Baby Kangaskhan though, I feel like it'd be better. It's actually, yeah, Baby Kangaskhan's better than Kangaskhan itself. It's just that the eyes, uh, like, comparatively, they're, they're pretty much the same. It's just it's a miniature form with the eyes are being different and of course the color's different. I, I mean, it's not that far off. Like, Baby Kangaskhan is not all that much as a design. It's just better than Kangaskhan, is what I'm saying. Mega Kangaskhan, though, um, Kangaskhan looks exactly different. It's a proud parent, but the, the baby Pokemon is what actually gets the Mega form, because it's that child now, and it has the same eyes as Kangaskhan, and they're posing together. It is exactly like a girls soccer team like this one's ready to play soccer yeah almost the same kind of uh, bricks uh, design I don't know it has like a blue thing in the middle um, I still kind of like baby Kangaskhan over this Kangaskhan but they should have still had that Pokemon by itself I feel like the early designs red and green is uh, better than the Kangaskhan for today surprisingly I don't really say that so far in the series but um, yeah we're getting up there on time by the way I'm not even I'm not even close to finish shoot I guess this might not be the final part after all so we got ourselves horsey um, I guess there's another water type that's kind of a basic uh, water animal I guess not really much to talk about but it's a nice color choice I mean it's not really too hard to choose, at least I didn't pick yellow as like the whole look to it or else it will ruin the look, honestly. But you know, yeah there's not really much else to talk about with Horsey. 
It looks a lot more tinier in red and green. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's evolution though, I actually do like the design of this. It's a lot sharper and crisper and it's such a better design than Horsey is. And I like this a lot. Like the, the little curl that it has curls a lot more and it looks a lot bulkier and it's torso looks more scalier and I always thought as a kid that it should be a dragon type and it was amazing that in generation 2 the evolution became a dragon but we'll get to that Pokemon when it gets to it and I like the the fins I don't know if that's what you call it but the, the fins is a good touch I feel like these are one of the better designs it is Seedra Seedra's pretty cool um early design I think Seedra was a bit different Oh yeah, he was. Um, no, that wouldn't work. Um, Cause like the little things are a bit too slim. I don't know. It, it doesn't work in my opinion. But the Seedra that we know today looks really, really freaking cool. Like you could tell the difference. Um, anyway, here's another simple fish, Goldeen. At least they have a nice color choice with Goldeen too, and it has a horn. Um, but yeah, I like the, it, it's almost like a floral pattern, but not really. It, I feel like it's a good color choice. Um, they might as well, I feel like Golden should have came in later, uh, later generations and have like different forms in different parts of the ocean to show different colorations, you know? It would have benefited a lot more than just have Golding just look like this all the time, you know? Uh, it, apparently, Leaf Green is also known as the Water Queen, which is ironic because the evolution is Sea King. So it's like, what the heck? Why make a feminine Pokemon if you're gonna call it something masculine? I don't know. Uh, it looks like a simple goldfish in the early generations, except like they always still kept like the coloration. I mean, I guess not really, because I can see it in yellow version. I can see the difference. And then from there onward, it's always been like the same type of coloration. So it's a bit interesting. We also got ourselves Sea King, which uh, has like a very unique uh, coloration. Um, I always thought Sea King was boring though, as a Pokemon in general. Uh, it, it's a very boring Pokemon. Golden, um, I always thought it was better than Sea King in a weird way. But if I'm really breaking down the design, I think the color choice is very nice. Maybe it's because of like the face area is what I have a problem with, maybe. Because it does have fish eyes and it has lips and I always forget half the time that it has teeth. So I don't know. Even with the coloration, I do feel like this Pokemon is very one dimensional as well. It does not show any personality whatsoever. Um, and I. I don't know, I kind of want to say Goldane is over this Pokemon anyway. Um, but yeah, good colorations for creativity. I feel like they could make this Pokemon better. It probably is the face. It's like, because I feel like when it comes to Pokemon, from what we've seen so far, we definitely know that personality is important when it comes to showing the Pokemon off. It was a lot worse more back then actually I see red and blue and tell me you don't see no personality whatsoever on this sprite here's an A1 example of this you know I guess I understand because when you like if you ever go fishing and you look at a fish or I guess you could just go in the store or something you know fish don't have personalities it, you know you look at it its eyes never blink or anything like that it kinda always looks like this that's what I see here in red and blue it, it looks like it's just it's just a regular fish it almost looks dead I don't know if it even is alive but you know there's that uh, I guess we're almost done here uh, we'll just talk about what uh, two more Pokemon and then that's it star you I feel like it's a great concept you know, they could have went the route and made Staryu boring if you talk, uh, if you just like think about it. So, you know, a starfish you could, you know, see right here is a regular pink, uh, you know, five sided fish, I guess. I don't really know what kind of species it is, honestly. But 
They could have made this into an actual Pokemon just by making it five sides and pink. That would have been terrible. You know, it would have been uninspired and, it, you know, because you could kind of understand Horsey and I can understand Shoulder because it's a clam. You don't need to do anything much about it. But they could have made Staryu so much more boring and I'm glad they did it. So instead what they did with Staryu is make it more, um, they, they made the design surrounded with the jewel itself. So with the jewel they put like a gold cr crown around it. I'm not really sure what the right word is. You know, they put gold around it and then they put like a whole different texture. Making it look like it's made out of some type of, some type of like metal or I don't want to say plastic, but like some type of material that's not flesh is what I'm saying. So I feel like Staryu works perfectly fine. I always did find it weird though that it has like the two uh, points at one end that has like the yellow and the rest doesn't have like the attachments. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. I'll probably show like an arrow or something. I'm just giving me more. I'm just giving myself more work by saying this, but. Um, yeah, I, I, I do like the Staryu design a lot. It's just a, it's just a very clever way of making a Pokemon not be boring, you know? So there's that. Uh, pretty much the same throughout the whole thing. They really thought this through, so I'm glad they did that. You know, make it a, a star from the sky and all that, but it's still a water Pokemon. It's such a great design, and I like the sound it makes in the anime. It's like, yo! Um... And then there's uh, Star Me. I like Star You a bit more. It's kind of weird. I, I think because I'm just so used to Star You, so I might be biased when I say this. Star Me, uh, maybe it's not represented right in this sprite that I'm showing on screen. Because Star You and Star Me, uh, you know, there's uh, there's some flexibility. It could kind of bend his arms and his legs. So um, you definitely see this in this sprite right here that you know kinda has some slack to it but uh, other than that I do like Starmie but for some reason I do like Staryu a little bit more but yeah I'm glad they made the starfish not boring again uh, it's still a good color choice it's gold red and purple it has the red jewel and it has like the the gold thing I guess so I don't know what to call it and it has more shapes to it I don't know uh, I guess Maybe I, I like Staryus because it's the right type of... I want to use the word simplicity, but not really. It's just, you know, it's five sides. And like I just like the five sides more than having ten sides, you know? That's just what I'm saying. It's it's the simplicity with Staryu that I like over Starmie. Then again, I, I say that. Being simplistic is having a regular starfish that's just pink. But I, I'm just... You know, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, let's see early designs. I'm assuming that it looks exactly the same. Yeah, it looks exactly the same throughout the whole generation. So they thought this through as well, which is good. So yeah, that's gonna be pretty much it. I thought I was gonna finish uh, sooner, but I'm barely at 121. So I apologize. But the next part will definitely be the last part when it comes to Kanto Pokemon. So hopefully I'll be able to do that. If you're new, do not forget to subscribe and like the video and share and all that stuff. You know, I'm I, I'm not forcing you to share, but uh, at least consider liking and subscribing. That'd be great. Voting's underway too, so if you want to vote, vote for any game that you like in the comments of any of my videos for any game that you would like me to play for my 10th Let's Play. So with that being said, in the next part, we're definitely going to finish. There's only less than 30 Pokemon left. I guess there's 30 Pokemon left, including Alola and Omegas. So yeah, White Tigers and Dragons to you, and you've been Scrabble the Night. I'm out!